Welcome to Widowed by 30. We're your hosts, Katie and Taylor. We're here to provide raw truth, guidance, and support to those who may be walking a similar path as ours. For even those who have no idea what it's like to lose a spouse. So stick around, grab a glass of wine, and hang out as we dive into all things widowhood. Hey y'all, welcome back. We are here today um, and we are going to kind of dive into the topic of our kiddos and their grief and kind of how we navigate and are there for them as a support system and mothers and while also dealing with <laughs> our own shit show <laughs> of grief. Um, but today's also the first day of school for both of us. Um, so how'd yours go? I'm honestly kind of offended. <laughs> because <laughs> uh, My sister-in-law and my sister came over to like see him off on his first day. He had went last year for, a, like, after his birthday, September 16th, so, like, he was able to go after that point, but um, he he has the same teachers, so he was very much, like, <gasps> Miss Stacy, The Ms. excitement. Tara, Ms. Yeah. Like, but it's so funny, because I was, whenever I took him to meet the teacher on Thursday, he said, no school, mommy, and I was like, Dallas Scott, like, no, 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 you are in pre-K, and we are not doing this. You have a long time for school. Um, so I kind of was like expecting him to be like against it. Like, I don't want to go in. Like, no. Mm-hmm. But I mean, we were all there and he was super excited. And he was just like, um, he saw one of his teachers and he like went up and hugged her. was super excited. Aww. And then started like playing with like one of the worksheets that was on the table. Mm-hmm. And he's like, bye, mommy. And I looked at him. Excuse okay. me? <laughs> and I, I, I was, like, shocked. It kind of took me a second. And my sister was in there, and she started laughing. And I was like, he doesn't even care. But she was dealing with the same thing because her yep. son was going into a different school. And so she already dealt with those emotions. But I was like, man. So I was like, well, I mean, I guess it's better than him crying. But, like, love me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a little bit. <laughs> I know. So I'm going to miss you. I think yeah. it was harder for me than him, but I guess that's a good thing. Yeah, I I think there's that that excitement where it's like, okay, good, there was no breakdown, but then it's like, like, can I get one I tier or something? I yeah, I, <laughs> I know. Yeah, well, so, that's like Maddie that started. I, Go ahead. The fact that I trust his teachers, that's yeah. like a huge plus. So, but yeah, yeah gone. Um, I know, and that's like Maddie. She started sixth grade today. First day of middle school, and it's like that, you know, like, oh, my God, my baby's growing up. Like, before I know it, she's going to be in high school, and then she's going to be a senior, and then off to college, and I'm just like, that anxiety. I'm You're giving freaking, yourself an anxiety attack. <laughs> I, I am. I'm like, oh, my God. Um, but she was like, drop off doesn't start till 7 10 and at seven o'clock she's like all right let's go I'm like Maddie we live two minutes down the road from school like we can't go yet mom like it, it's 708 we gotta go I'm like school doesn't even start till 7 33 chill out and her best friend just enrolled at the same school so she's like over the moon that they're, they're gonna be excited. there together they're in the same class like just so she was like I don't give two shits about you like I want to go see hey get me out of here <laughs> Damn. Oh, but it the was audacity. good. I mean, <laughs> I know. I'm gonna remember that the next time you need something. Um, yeah, right. How you best friend? <laughs> yes. <yeah. laughs> exactly. Um, Petty me. But it was good. <laughs> it's just they grow up so fast, and I know, dude. And I, I mean, I feel like I just had Dallas like mm-hmm. turns four and. September and River just turned two. Like it's just wild. I know. Hi, Pat. <laughs> Look at you creeping in. Um, go later. Um, so I guess to kind of dive in about the kids. Um, mm-hmm. I'll 
I think I'll kind of let you start because yeah. I think it was last week you had posted or week before last you had posted mm-hmm. um, River having her breakdown, you know, missing her daddy. And yeah, um, like ugh, when I saw that, my heartstrings were just pulled in yeah, every dude. direction. Girl, I was not expecting her to react the way that she did because like I had my phone in my pocket. And like, I was just getting her ready, you know, stuff like that. And she literally just, like, full-on breaks down. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? And, like, we have um, – she goes to sleep really easily for me. Mm-hmm. Like, Dallas is my hard one. And she'll normally, like, she'll sleep all night. Like, she's she's good. As long as she has her blankets, her babies, and her pillow, like, she's good. So I was like, all right. And then – like, I made sure all of that was in, and I, my mom gave her, um, her, like, one of her, like, first generation iPhones that mm-hmm. only turn on, pretty much, and, um, <laughs> because she always throws a fit about wanting our phones, because it's the picture of us four, like, me, her dad, River, and Dallas, and she always wants to look at it, but she'll always, like, end up hitting buttons, locking us out, you know, whatever. And so my mom was like, well, here, just give her this. And that way she can just look at the picture whenever she wants. Like, all right. So that's been a very, like, it's been a staple piece in our house lately. Like, she constantly wants to look at it. She's like, daddy, daddy, like, dad, dad. And then she'll, like, grab the phone and then she'll kiss it, you know, things like that. And I'm like, mm, that's sweet. But she's never, like, broken down at night. Like, she'll break down mm-hmm. during the day when she's tired, you know, whatever. But not before bed. Like, she was so adamant on, like, daddy daddy I'm like why are you crying like I, like what's wrong and I couldn't like pinpoint it and then I finally was just like wait a minute and I went and grabbed her phone and she immediately like stopped crying and was like daddy and like hug like I swear like hugs the phone and then kisses oh it God. and I I grabbed my phone out so I was gonna send it to my sister-in-law and I start recording it and then she just starts doing it all again and I'm like don't cry. Do not cry in front mm-hmm. of her. Like, you know, she's already on edge. She's tired. I need to hold, like, if I can do anything for her right now, it's holding it together. Yeah. And so I try my best to, like, keep it together. But, yeah, she, like, full on breaks down. And, you know, everybody saw the video. I posted it on all of my social medias. Mm-hmm. Tell me why. I got so much love and support on Instagram about it. And then, like, I posted it on, I just posted the clip on TikTok initially, and people were coming for me. They were like, what? You're a shitty mom, like, you need to be <gasps> comforting her. Yeah, like, I was so shocked. So, like, if anything, TikTok has more of, like, a following for, like, widows that I yeah. was under the impression. Yeah. And they are like, you know, she needs comfort. Like, I don't know why you're doing, like, not doing that. And I was just like, excuse me? <laughs> what is happening like within like seconds I like deleted it and then I um reposted it and because she's had two back-to-back that's what it was she had two back-to-back breakdowns she had one during the day and that's one that people were coming for me on and then I had the one at her at night but because she was asking for her dad in both of them and the first time they were like you know you need to comfort her you need to be there and I'm like what the fuck and so I deleted it and then I put in the clips of me like explaining you know like this is just a small glimpse of like the day in the life of being with children that don't have their fathers you know yeah and then I had so much positivity and stuff but the pic the video that I posted of her last time it actually did get a lot of like love and support you know things Mm -hmm. like that but it's like those little things happen at a blink of a eye at oh, any yeah. point in time like the they smallest just, thing is a trigger yeah and you know you don't think about it being triggers for like them they're two and four and you know right. Maddie how old is she 12 11 11 yeah like you know it's you just don't think of it I mean I guess Maddie a little bit different because she's older so there's right more and she knows more how to process feelings Express versus it, like, River and Dallas yeah right. and so it was it was crazy, dude. Like that, that alone, like being able to kind of 
be like a voice for other parents and, you know, putting it on social media and just it like blowing up the way it did. I'm, it breaks my heart because it's like, There's... I hate that we're, that she has to like be the face of this because, you know, you want to protect your kids too. Like, you of don't course. want to, yeah. All of the like ins and outs on social media when it comes to them. But that kind of comes with the territory of like me being a voice for widows, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. so like they just happen to be the, the spotlight. They're in the spotlight when it comes to that too. And yeah. it's hard because they can't express themselves and they can't tell me straight up, like, I miss daddy. Like, all they can do right. is cry. And the second that I hand her a phone that has this picture on it, she's happy. She kisses it, hugs it, literally hugs it to sleep. And it's just heartbreaking because it's like, how how do I comfort that? How do right. I fix that? Because as a parent, all you want to do is fix it and you can't. Yeah. And that's kind of like, I don't know, with her, it's tough because she is only two and she can't, like Dallas can kind of explain a little bit more, but he's mm-hmm. so distracted, I guess you can say. Like I said to the doctor last week, because I was like, I don't know what to do. Like he does not sleep. Um, He'll only sleep unless I am in bed with him. He has to feel me near him like he's scared that I'm going to leave him, you know, or whatever, because Clayton's not here. And I really think that that's like a huge factor in a lot of children that have lost mm-hmm. their, one of their parents because they don't, um, it's just a fear. Like they don't understand that, Hey, they're in heaven. Like this is the situation, you know, yeah. they don't think the way they do. They can't process it. And yeah. so he's scared that I'm leaving him. And so I took him to the doctor and I was like, I don't know what to do. Like he starts school next week and I like all, of, I get everything done at night for school the next day. So I need him to be able to fall asleep. He can't go to sleep with the yeah. TV on every night. Like, cause he won't, yeah. he'll stay up all night. And so she was like, I think that it's probably a good idea to prescribe him this medicine. That's like an anxiety medicine, mm-hmm. but it makes you tired. And so I was like, okay, well that might be like, she's like, give it 30 minutes before bed. And just try it. See if it works. And I've tried it for the last few days. It hasn't necessarily worked, but he yet, at least, you know, I'm going to give it a few more days. But um, he's very much like she said, think about it this way. He's not sleeping because he's scared that you're not going to be there, right? Like his whole world has been turned upside down. He doesn't know the next time that you drop him off somewhere if you're coming back. Right. And they don't know how to process that. Right. And so she was like, you know, of course, like there's, they know, he knows that his dad isn't here, but how they are at that age that they wake up and they, they know that they haven't seen him, but they, they wake up with the thought of like, well, he could be coming back. It's not, it's not forever. Like he'll come back eventually. Right. Yeah. And so she was like, in the, in a way, shape or form, like he's in denial. And mm-hmm. I said, that makes total sense because I'm a grown ass 30 year old woman and I it took me I mean I'm still in denial sometimes and we're eight oh yeah yeah you know so like of course like why wouldn't a four-year-old be like that be like, exactly think the exact same so, way so <laughs> it's and he can't express it so what's his other method having fit not sleeping like you know just testing the waters and he's all right he's four so of course he's gonna test the waters so this is just like kind of a double whammy but he like doesn't he doesn't like I think that's his kind of way of grieving like mm-hmm. he doesn't have full-on temper tantrums where he's like daddy like I want daddy I miss him like River does but he he sees a picture of him he's like daddy he hears his voice he lights up like you know things like that and it's just crazy to to really try to like wrap your head around I have two children that I have to kind of I have to be very particular on how I react to each situation right. when it comes they're so to their different. Grief. And they're so different, you know, and I don't know how to really express it or I guess it's trial and error, you know, being there mm-hmm. for them because I'm trying not to break down either. But right. it's like that's my job on their mother. I have to protect them. I have to be strong for them. And 
that's what it kind of gets me through it. But yeah, I mean, they're both very different, but the same at the same time because they don't fully grasp it. They just handle it differently. And it sucks because yeah, I'm their voice, me, like, and mm-hmm. I don't know. Feeling. <laughs> <laughs> we're still so, trying to figure out how to deal with our own shit and yeah and throw kids into the mix and it's such a sensitive topic because it's like you want to be strong for them and you want to just make it better and yeah. you can't it's like it's just not snap of your fingers and they're okay you know yeah. it, it's trying to figure out how to navigate those emotions and their hearts and just being there for them as much as possible and comforting them and loving them and reassuring them. Like I'm here, you know? Yeah. Um, cause that's my outlook on it. Yeah. And you were saying how like with Dallas, him not knowing if you're coming back or whatever. And, um, Maddie and I actually had a discussion yesterday um, because she talked with my mom over the weekend. And so then my mom, we were sitting down having coffee, I don't know, Saturday morning, I guess. And she was like, Maddie, like lost it last night um, because I had went out (laughs) for my birthday or whatever. But she like completely broke down to my mom and was talking about the fact how she's scared she's going to lose me too. And like, I've had those thoughts of, yeah, what if something happens to me or, or what if something happens to Maddie, you know, those kind of intrusive thoughts that happen all the time to people, but like to hear that she's having those same thoughts because she's never voiced that to me. Because she's trying to be strong for you. Exactly. And like, it completely broke my heart because like, I'm not going anywhere, knock on wood, you know, like you just, you never know. I didn't think Josh was going anywhere. And it's like, I pray every single day that nothing else happens to either her or I, that we have to deal with something like that. Um, yeah. But, you know, and, and so yesterday we sat down and, you know, had a little discussion about it because, you know, you want to reassure her, like, I'm not going anywhere. But it's like in the back of your mind, you're also thinking like, but I don't know. I can't, and I can't promise her that. And I can't promise, I know. And that's what I kept saying. I was like, do not say, I promise I'm not going anywhere because I've heard of so many stories where it's like, you, you promised me this, you promised me this. And then now you're gone. And, and I'm like, I don't want her to have those emotions um, Yeah, because you don't know what's going to happen. Um, so give me props because I don't think I could mentally like have those conversations and that's I really do think that that's kind of a blessing for me in some way that you know I've dealt with so much like I don't have to have these conversations with my kids yeah yeah and and that's like (sighs) there's only been a few times where you know we've sat down and had difficult I'd say conversations about him not being here and, and just that whole kind of grief topic with a child. Um, and Maddie's pretty understanding. And if she doesn't understand, you know, she asks questions and I do my best to answer them. But like I was just saying, like, we don't even know, <laughs> you know? And so some of these questions that she asks, I'm like, how the hell am I supposed to answer this? Like, I, I don't have an answer. And so then I'm like, honestly, I don't know, baby. Like, I don't, I don't know how long it's going to take, you know, to feel yeah. better um, and to not miss him so much. And, you know, and, and but I also tell her it may never feel better. Yeah. Um, and I think especially, it's more of, I think it's more of, it doesn't go away. Like that's never no, going to happen. Sure. You're never going to feel better. You're just going to get better at managing it dealing with the emotions yeah and that's kind of what I told her I was like you will we will always miss him 
but as time goes on, we just learn how to deal with the emotions and how to get through each day without letting it consume every other aspect of your life. Um, yeah. And I don't know, it's just so hard because like at times it's like, I wish she were a little bit younger and not really or understand that he's not coming back. But then at the same time, but then that's selfish on our part. It is. Because it, oh, she for sure. wouldn't have the memories. Have the memories. And that's exactly so, like, what I was about to say. Struggle. It's like, yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. And and the flip side to that is I'm so glad she is 11 years old. Because she will always remember him. And she will always know how a father should treat his kids or his daughter and how a man should treat his wife. And, you know, there's, there's that flip side to it, you know, but selfishly there's days where I'm like, fuck, you know, like I, I was not expecting to deal with this and you never know when it's going to approach. You never know. It hits. Yes. I mean, we could be, we could be having the worst day ever. And then it's like, we got to suck it up. (laughs) And then, And then their emotions take over and you just got to put yourself on the back burner for a day or a moment or a couple of hours to help them through their struggle because they are the most important. Like, yes, we have to take care of ourselves to take care of our kids. But when it is the time to take care of them, like we have to do that. They are number one. Um, Mm. But, uh, and with Maddie, you know, she is also the type, and you said it a little bit ago, like, she wants to be strong for me. Yeah. She doesn't want to be upset. And she's sometimes scared to bring up topics because she doesn't want me to be upset. And, yeah. you know, and I've told her over and over again, I'm like, baby, like, you are not going to upset me. Whatever questions you have, whatever you want to know ask me like it is okay I was like we will cry together we will be angry together we will laugh together like it does not matter we will figure it out just like we have the past five months we will take it day by day and and we'll get through it you know it freaking sucks and it's hard and I do anything for us to not have to do this but there's nothing we can do about it you know we just have to be there for each other and and that's that, you know, we, we are each Honestly, other's support system. No, no doubt. And I mean, like, we obviously, I feel like both of us have a very good support system. I oh, can't really yeah. speak on your behalf, but for me, like, my support system is the best I could ever. Oh, hands down, same expect. here. But, like, I'm so blessed within that aspect of this journey. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, there are. They can be there all day long, but we've had this conversation in the past, you know, like it doesn't matter because we still feel alone in some ways, shape or form. Um, yeah, they can be there for us every single day, but it doesn't, it's like an emptiness inside of us. Like that's just right. what it is. Yeah. And although they feel that as well, like it's just different being on our side of it. But I'm honestly just so thankful that like we live in a day that technology is so advanced oh my god I know because we have all of this like all the videos all the pictures the live videos where you can hear them talk in the back you know like yeah things that bears that we can put their voices in with their heartbeat like you know so many different things that we can hold on to and like keep for the kids that will mm-hmm. never go away because the internet is forever <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, exactly whether we delete it or not, like it's still going to be there in some way, shape, form. Right. And so I'm just thankful that, you know, we're not living in uh, six years ago where there weren't cameras or, you know, I don't know when cameras were invented, but <laughs> <laughs> the technology we have these days. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, cameras are there, but 
you can't they have the only it's hand nothing copy, like what you know right yeah i yeah. think like that so i am mean, thankful on that oh for sure that regard that i have that for all like always and whether i keep this phone or not i if i get a new phone like i can keep this and keep it on everything saved to the icloud yeah and um, i was going through did you know that iPhones delete messages after a year. I have mine turned off. <laughs> How There's do you this, do that? Uh, in like the settings, in settings, and then your messages, and it's like it's one of the little slide things. I have mine turned off because I'm like okay, I don't. Well, that's so and it's annoying. been turned off for years because I'm. Well, I need you. receipts in different okay. situations <laughs> so I had no idea right and so I like the other day like I was going through Clayton and my text messages and I'm really thankful that I did this because mm -hmm. it as hard as it was and you know things like that like I noticed that it's only like they they delete after a year so I only have stuff from August of last year which he died in December right and so that's sucks like I screenshotted every single message pretty much like I have like 60 screenshots and they're just all in an album now because I don't ever lose those you lose those like, yeah sucks because like you know I thought that I was gonna have our messages forever from and yeah from years ago still there yeah um, and they're not and so for anybody that has an iPhone I would take that off if you want to keep your messages. And I mean, yeah. for red receipts too, but for cinema. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to figure that out. That was the original reason I had it I turned off. Out. And now I am I on know. a whole different level of it. Like, I'm so glad I yeah. had it turned off. But I do wish you could select, like, Who? certain people because, like, right now I'm dealing with, like, iCloud shortage storage uh -huh. issues and when I went and looked at what was taking up the most space it's my freaking text messages That's so then it. it's like having to go through and delete the ones I don't need and blah 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 but anyway um I know and so like for Maddie oh, I got right, her right oh my god I hate my life found it? <laughs> yes uh, so for anybody that needs to know how to do this Go to your settings and then messages. And then it says message history. And you can keep it for 30 days, one year, or forever. Forever. I want to cry. No. That sucks. Well, at least you learned about it now and not a year from now. And then there's no messages. Yeah, true. Um, Damn. So for Maddie, like she's always had an iPad and then she had like a gizmo watch, which, you know, on that she could only communicate with certain people. And, you know, I had it more for peace of mind while she was at school and activities and things like that. Well, after Josh passed away, I got her a phone because I'm like, I want to know anything and everything. Every Live 360, mm -hmm. like I'm tracking her everywhere because my anxiety going oh, back yeah. to like the fear of losing someone like I want to be yeah. able to communicate with her at all times and you know and I think one of the things like I journal that has been like I was journaling before he passed away but like I journal weekly a few times um Maddie ever since I got her her phone she texts Josh all the time and like because I still have his phone. And so the first time I went through it, I was like, who is this number that's blowing up his phone? Because it wasn't saved in his phone because she got the phone number after he passed after. away. And it was like, she hit the mailbox with your truck again. She hit a curve with your truck again. I was like, who is this? And then Who's I'm looking at on me? freaking Maddie. <laughs> And so anytime, I know, anytime I do something, she texts Josh, like a little snitch, but that was their relationship. Like we go places and I go shopping or whatever. I'm like, do not tell Papa Bear, like we spent this much money. Papa Bear, we went here today. Guess how much money we spent? And I'm like, you Ugh. I'm never buying you anything again. And that's what I said. I was like, I'm gonna remember that. So I'm gonna go return everything I bought you. 
Um, but it's like she still does that. And so I think for her, like that kind of like helps a coping mechanism. her. Yes. And yeah. and I love that. And and then there's times where she's like, I miss you so much. You know, yeah. I start school in a few weeks. I wish you were here. You know, there's that flip side to it. Yeah. Ugh. I told myself I, know, I, I to get emotional today. Um, but it's like, yeah, there's that humor and the joking and the picking that they always did because they always teamed up on me. But then it's like that yeah. flip side where she gets emotional and well, she lost her partner in crime. Yes, exactly. And, you know, and there's times like she'll text him stuff that I didn't know she was dealing with. And so then it's like I see those messages. And I'm like, okay, so this was like her struggle that's going on the last few days. And, and, and I don't can't call her out about it because right, she's not going to feel right texting him, texting it to him. But I kind of, I use it to my advantage of, okay, this is what she's struggling with. Let me kind of bring the topic up very nonchalant or figure out ways to navigate for her to talk to me about it. Yeah. Um, and, and so like for that, I'm super grateful that she's at that age where she can communicate with Josh and air quotes. Uh, bless you. Excuse bless me. you. <laughs> um, because it helps me be able to somewhat navigate the yeah. emotions she has that she doesn't want me to know about because she doesn't want me to be upset. And, right. and she's such a caring, she's always so worried about other people and she puts everyone first, which is a good thing. But at times I'm like, baby, like you need to also protect yourself. Like who cares about that everybody is else? Seriously, Clayton's <sighs> niece, like Clayton's niece, Bella, she just started high school. And oh, so man. she, and I mean, it was like from the time him and I got together, it has always been me and Clayton and then his sister, her kids and her husband. Like it, it, we were like a package deal oh. and everybody, everybody who knew us like knew that. And so it was kind of a different like relationship for Carly and Clayton versus like other siblings. Cause I mean, I'm close with my siblings and I've actually gotten really like a lot closer to my older sister and um, as I became a parent but mm -hmm. you know there were years that like I wasn't oh yeah and I was selfish yeah. and I you know was this or whatever but um I will say like Brainy and I have gotten a lot closer and she's been there for me more than I could ever imagine her doing that so like I'm very thankful for that so shout out to you but um Harley and Clayton were just they were a different breed like they were inseparable and, um, you know, I got thrown in the mix. And so with that, obviously, the kids are a part of the equation. And right. so, you know, like, we didn't miss games. We didn't miss birthdays. Right. We didn't, you know, we were there for everything. And so Bella, like, I really want to turn off his phone because I'm like, or I go back and forth because I'm like, I, I want to keep it forever. But it's like, once I found out the year thing. I was like, I can send all of his stuff to like my phone and I have it, but I'm paying like an additional hundred dollars a month and it's been eight months. Like that's $800. And I mean, I'm a single parent now. Like I have to kind of budget. Yeah. And so I've been going back and forth on that, but I haven't done it because his friend Jacob still calls, still call Clayton's phone. And then, like, all Texas phone, but Bella, which is his niece, like, she is the main one who, like, religiously texts his phone. You know, and, like, I check his phone, like, every day, every few days. Yeah. And I see these messages, and then I just, like, it kills me. Cause I'm, like, she, she's a little older than Maddie, and so, like, I can see what you're going through, like, through Bella. And Bella, yeah. Bella is the type that is, like, I'm not going to... I'm not going to show my emotions. Like I'm going to stick it out. You know, right. like she played, she played softball and that was like, we loved it. Clayton was so into it. And she like, she still played and like her whole team was like named fight. 
because we got those fight shirts made for Clayton. Mm-hmm. And so her coach, like he, he dedicated the season last year to Clayton. Aww. Yeah. And so like it, and like they did like camo because Clayton loved hunting and like on the bag, it said like Clayton strong. I'm going to cry. Uh, yeah. Like it was, it was sweet. It was really sweet. And so she struggled, you know, through this in a different light than I was experiencing with my kids. And so, you know, Carly has to kind of go through the exact same thing that you are going through, but then Carly can't keep it together sometimes either, you know? And so Bella's mm-hmm. like always the strong one. And we're like, Bella, like you have to be able to feel it's okay to have emotions, but she's like, no, like she will not let very rare. She'll let any of us see it. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of like, are we the, adults or is she like right she's so adamant on like protecting us you know and like yeah. especially her mom like it is her mom and her are like the same person and we have to tell her like you know you're still a kid like your uncle Clayton would want you to like be a kid so yeah. just remember that like you didn't have to grow up when we left right when we lost him so that's like a that's a struggle in itself yeah. and I don't know how I got on the subject of that but um <laughs> I don't know I think I was thinking about the phone situation and how yeah. that's kind of her outlet to right. you know for communicating and his birthday her birthday you know like right so sad. like her, her birthday she was like the only thing I want is like for you to be here it's all for my birthday because it was like a month after he passed yeah and so you know like me getting those messages because I'm looking at it it just breaks my heart because yeah I can't fix that you can't her mom fix it. Exactly. can't fix that like yeah. all we can do is just kind of be there and be there know, for she wants her to talk yeah. to us but if not then we can't force it right but they were like his kids you know Bella and Nathan mm-hmm. they both were mm-hmm. it was our families together those were like, his babies before y'all had your before own babies our kids yeah yeah exactly so it's it's tough and I, I couldn't imagine having to deal with what you're dealing with because, yeah. and then it's I, also hard at this age because like, okay, she's 11. So it's like puberty and all of those emotions oh my God. in the mix. And so then I'm trying to navigate, okay, is she just being a hormonal brat <laughs> or is she having a hard day and struggling? And so, yeah. I mean, there's been plenty of times I'm like, let we need to have a come to Jesus because this isn't how the day is going to start out. It's always first thing in the morning and there's mornings. We can't both be in a bad mood. We can't yeah. both be moody. We can't <laughs> both be at each other's heads. So let's sit down and figure out what's going on, you know? Yeah. And it, well, and you got to think about it too. Mm. Like we're... Like, I don't know how Maddie is with you, mm-hmm. but I think that Bella's scared of her mom. Like, she knows better to, like, test the water surf. Oh, or, like, yeah. Absolutely not. But yep. I was kind of the closest person, female-wise, like, mm-hmm. to her. So she felt like I feel Almost like, like that big sister. So she lashes out at me because. She can't lash I, out at her mom. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And I'm over here, like. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> yeah, like I'm trying really hard not to take it personal, you know, and things right. like that because she is a teenager and she's going yeah. through emotions and all these, you know, I I can't picture being 13 or 14 years old and dealing with that. Yeah. I dealt with it as a younger kid, so I know what my kids are going through. I didn't deal with this through my teenage years. Right, right. Like, it was already set in stone that I knew my dads were gone. They weren't coming back. Right, right. You know, so, but this was, like, a hit for her. Like, her eighth grade year, she's going in. So, I, it's just really crazy the different phases that each kid goes through at certain ages. Yeah. And then every phase is different for everyone else. Like, yeah. One kid could really struggle with this aspect of it. And then Maddie could be good at dealing with that part of Mm -hmm. the grieving stage and then vice versa. You know, it's, 
everyone yeah. is different in their emotions and their personality. Does she blame? And... Like, does she like lash out at you at all? About... She doesn't. She um, and and maybe she hasn't gotten there yet because like maybe she's not at the angry stage yet. Yeah, and and I don't think she is. Um, and it's so hard to know and to be able to pinpoint. But it's like this summer. I was like, whatever she wants, she gets, you know, to a certain extent, like she's not going to be a spoiled brat. That's not how we raised her. But like, you want to go on a trip, you want to go see your friends in Colorado, you want to do this, you want to do, let's go, you know, and so we were very go, 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 go. Oh, yeah, all summer. All summer. And I'm like, I got one more trip coming up this weekend. And then after that, I'm like, done. And I'm like, yeah, excited. But at the same time, I'm like, Thank God, you know, because yeah, I need lot. normalcy and I'm ready to just be home. Um, yeah. But anyway, like with Maddie, it's hard to tell because I don't know if she's just been so preoccupied with everything that she hasn't really processed it completely. But then there's other days where I'm like, she fully comprehends, you know, like she is aware of everything. Um but I think it depends but on the day too. And like, it does. And I'm how, like, did she dream about him the night before? You know, like what right. caused her to yes. wake up in a pissy mood? And yeah, something happened. Yeah. You know, or maybe yeah. she's and just about to start her period, you know, like whatever. Yeah. Like you don't know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, I know. And it's like some it. days <laughs> I'm like, I wish she would just finally start her period. So then I have something Dude, to blame. The like, pre PMS is brutal. <sighs> God, I'm like, Josh, I don't know how the hell I'm gonna get through this. You better like <laughs> oh visit God. her while she's sleeping because oh. like I don't know. It's it's so hard. Tell but her then to check the tood. Yes. Oh, I'm I always that is my phrase. I'm like, you better check your tooth real quick. Or I look at her and she's like, Oh shit, okay, I was out of line. Like she just knows, you know, and yeah. She's she is an easy kid, and I love that about her. And I'm like, thank God, because if I had like a if little she was hoodlum, already rebellious, and yes, like, oh my God, I'd be it would be screwed. We'd be out. I know, and I'm some, I'm like I'm in some of those like widowed with young kids or widowed with children mm-hmm. group, mm-hmm. and I don't really get on them a lot, but I get notifications because honestly, they stress me out. Like they're just yeah, oh, it's right. too much. Like I I I, I just can't. I can't wait either. Yeah. And so like I'm in some of them and I'll pop them on my news feeds, you know, stuff like that. But I don't dive deep. And that's just my yeah. personal preference. Uh, I'm the same way. However, you know, grieve however you want, whatever. But um, for me, that's just not it. But like I see these parents complaining and dealing with like, I don't know how to handle my teenager, my preteen, they're walking out of our house. Like, they're being so disrespectful. And I'm like, whoo, like, I would. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. I know. I'm the same I'm way. And it's CPS like. CPS on me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally. We are not I, doing that. I know. Okay. And, you know, like, Josh was a military kid. And then he was in the military. And then, like, my family is very Southern. So it's like, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Please. Thank you. You know, brush your T's and dot your I's. And so we are that same way with Maddie. And like, and we get so many compliments about she is such a sweetheart. Like, whatever y'all are doing, like, y'all keep it up. And and it's like, as a parent, you're like, oh, Like, I'm doing something something right. right. As much as you're at home and you're like, what the hell did I do wrong? Like, why why is today going like it is? But then you get the compliments from her friend's parents or complete strangers. And you're like, okay, well, I guess that's all that matters. As long as she's being respectful to others. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And not that she's disrespectful to me, but there's times where I want to throw hands with her. Yeah, she yeah. sets her limits, and I mean, that's no. any kid at that age, so mm-hmm. it just is kind of a double whammy at this point, because we have a lot more on our plate, because we're doing it alone. Yeah, yeah, and, and there's all these so many emotions. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. But 
I think that's all I have. Um, I hope I explained it pretty well from my perspective. I think so. Yeah. And same here. Um, I mean, it's, again, those two different perspectives. Like, yeah, we both have kids involved, but They're different. it's different situations. That's why I love and it. I love that I we're know. able to talk about all of that because every single, like, listener that we have or they can relate in some way, shape, or form. In some right? way, yes. Whether it's yeah. to me and my story, you and your story, or your kids, or my kid, or just all aspects of it, you know? And there may be things like they can relate to you because their spouse had cancer, but they had older kids like mine, you know? Right. It, it's it's just totally different for everyone. And I love that it kind of fell into place that our stories are so different but so, like, it, it so, just helps so, alike so in some many. way. Yeah. Yes. Like, it's yeah. broad. Very. Very broad audience. And that's what's nice is because that's the whole point of this was to be an allegory exactly. to help every other widow that we can, or widow or, you know, man or woman, it doesn't matter. But um, yeah. we just want to help people. And that's kind of why we're doing this. So yeah. we hope that you guys enjoyed this episode and we will see you next week see y'all next week